Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and do you know why July of 2020 is important? Well, it's actually because of this. It's the best chance for us to once again go to Mars and to visit this beautiful planet. First I'm going to explain to you why, but second I'm also going to talk about what China is planning. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What Night. So approximately every two years, there is an opportunity for us to go to Mars again. But why every two years? And to answer this, I'm going to have to briefly talk about the orbital dynamics. Now, as you can see, Earth, which is right here, goes around the Sun once a year. Mars, on the other hand, takes a little bit longer, about 1.9 years. So once in a while, obviously Mars is going to be on the opposite side of the Sun right around here, you can see that Earth and Mars are basically on the opposite sides, which is the farthest distance possible. But about every two years, they come into just the right position, which is actually somewhere around here, where it's basically the perfect opportunity for us to launch a mission to Mars, because it creates the shortest distance. But why is it here and not really here, which is the direct line? Well, to answer this, we have to briefly discuss the so-called Hoffman's orbital transfer. This is what you're seeing right here. This is a transfer from obviously our planet Earth to possibly something that looks like Mars. The way that orbital transfers work is that you actually don't just directly fly in a straight line. Instead, for you to transfer to another planet, which I'm going to try to simulate by using this beautiful interstellar or interplanetary teapot, we have to boost the speed of this teapot so much that its orbit starts crossing the orbit of Mars in this case. So, if we were to give it just enough velocity, just over 4 km per second extra velocity, and here it's represented by this white orbital ring, you'll notice that in the bottom part it still crosses planet Earth, so this is where it essentially leaves planet Earth, but in the upper part it crosses the Martian plane, or essentially the orbital path of Mars. And the whole goal of this transfer maneuver is to essentially arrive at this location when Mars is here. So this kind of happens approximately every 26 months. It's not really um, a very frequent event. So for this teapot to actually launch and arrive at Mars, it needs to be launched at a very, very precise moment of time. In this case, it's July of 2020. And there are now three official missions already planned to go to Mars. Two of them are definitely happening. One is so secretive that we don't really know. The secretive one is obviously the mission from China. And by the way, the other two being the uh, Perseverance rover from NASA and also the so-called HOPE mission that's going to be launched by the United Arab Emirates on a Japanese rocket. But we'll talk more about this closer to the mission itself. This mission is actually also pretty exciting, but today we're talking about China. Because for a few years now, China has actually very secretively been planning a mission to Mars as well. And the last we've heard about this mission was back in January of 2020, before the whole COVID-19 pandemic. Now here's the thing though, initially this mission was super secretive, nobody even knew it was being planned, mostly I guess because China wasn't sure if it can pull it off. Originally, China was planning to go to Mars on the Russian mission known as Phobos Grunt, which unfortunately failed um, a few years ago. Russia and back then Soviet Union had extreme unfortune when it comes to uh, trying to land on Mars. Of all of the missions Soviet Union and Russia tried to launch, pretty much most of them except for one were a complete failure. Now, the thing is, it's nothing to do with the inability of Russians to land there, because as a matter of fact, Soviet Union was technically the first to successfully land um, an actual lander and take pictures from Mars, from the surface of Mars, using Mars 3. But this thing failed after about 17 seconds. And so unfortunately for Russia, it's always been the United States that had the most luck with these missions. And this is just to show you how extremely difficult it is to land a rover on Mars. Because even the European Space Agency has so far failed. They all have orbiters around Mars, even India has one, but the thing is, landing an actual probe, an actual rover on Mars has been really, really difficult. And it just so happens that this is exactly what China is planning to do, starting in July of 2020, at least as of their last announcement. So here's their plan so far. Their plan is to launch this right here, this is the heaviest rocket they have, known as Long March 5. And unfortunately for China, this rocket, of all its flights so far, has actually failed once already. 
It only had three flights so far, two of them were successful, one failed miserably, and there's actually one planned for sometime in April of 2020, but we haven't heard much about this either. So right now it's really difficult to say if this is going to be a successful launch at all, because actually the Russian launch failed because of the rocket. But just for this mission they actually tested the rocket engines back in January of 2020, prior to the COVID outbreak, and some of the last reports suggested that everything seems to work fine. So for now we can only assume that the rocket launch will be fine. And what they're going to be launching is essentially this. This is the combination of Mars rover, or technically a Mars lander, which is this upper part with a heat shield, and there's also parachutes on the inside, and the orbiter that's going to be um, staying in orbit of Mars and also looking for the best location for the rover to then land. Now, the mission itself is extremely challenging. Now, we know that China already had one major success on the dark side of the moon, and this was essentially Chang'e 4 mission that allowed us for the first time to actually see what the dark side or the far side of the moon even looks like in terms of the actual surface. And so Chinese Space Agency is actually planning to use a relatively similar landing parameters for this mission as well. But there is a difference though. Here, the signal only takes a few seconds to reach planet Earth, so if there was any mistake, they could have actually corrected it. On Mars, for the signals to reach Mars and to then return back to Earth, it will take anywhere from 4 minutes up to about 13 minutes, depending on the location of Mars in the solar system. So anything that has to be done here has to be done remotely by the actual computer on board the landing probe that they're going to be trying to land on Mars. And as we know from the more recent failure by the European Space Agency, the Chaparelli craft that you see right here, it is a lot more difficult than most of us can imagine. But that is not to say that China is going to fail this mission, it's just right now not really looking good for them in terms of the statistics of previous missions. The success rate has been really low, and only NASA so far has been successful mostly because of their previous experiences and the mistakes they learned from with all of the previous failures. If China, however, succeeds in this mission, it means that there will be officially the third ever country to land on Mars. And also report back from the region we haven't been to in several decades. This is the region known as Utopia Planitia and it was actually originally visited by the Viking 2 mission by NASA. And it seems to be a region with potentially a lot of water deposits and what China expects to find here or to look for here is of course life or signs of life. So this is basically the primary mission of their lander. Their little rover thing is going to survive there for about 90 days and try to discover any signs of potential previous life that may have existed on life or maybe still exists there as well. If this mission is successful, and that's a big if right now, China could be the first country to find signs of life on Mars. At least that's their goal. That's their ultimate goal. But remember, NASA is also planning something really similar around the same time. So I guess at this point, we kind of have a new space race on our hands. The space race to colonize other planets, possibly discover new resources on other planets as well, and possibly also be the first to develop some sort of a mining colony on the moon that has recently been proposed by the Trump administration. For now though, that's unfortunately really all we kind of know about this mission, it's really been quite secretive and the only announcement has actually been last year at one of the European Space Agency presentations, so we really have no idea what's going to happen to the mission or where it currently is at this moment. Actually, we do know its name. It's supposed to be called Huaxin 1, which means Mars 1. We also know that the entire component here is about 5 tons in mass, the rover inside is about 250 kilograms, and it will use the combination of the heat shield, parachutes, and also retro thrusters to try to land on the surface, very similar to the NASA missions. And since unfortunately we don't really have any kind of media or any news from the Chinese agency, we're gonna have to pretend that this is the Chinese mission by using the video from NASA. This is the InSight mission that landed on Mars in 2018 using really really similar parameters. We have the heat shield that essentially slows down the craft um, on the approach to the atmosphere. We then have parachutes that slow down the craft in the really thin atmosphere. And finally, we have the retro thrusters that attempt to slow down the craft above the surface. In case of the Chinese mission, they're going to actually release the parachutes around 70 meters above ground. And the craft is then going to do this. It's going to hover above the surface, around 70 meters above the surface, until it finds the proper place to land. Upon landing, that's where it's going to release the rover. Now all of this is extremely complicated and a single mistake here will probably cost China the entire mission, as we've learned many times from some of the previous missions as well. 
So if this goes well, this is going to be a huge step for the Chinese space program. And if it doesn't, well, it's going to be some other country that's going to land there and be the third on Mars. And what's really interesting is that for this particular mission, China was able to get agreements from Namibia and Argentina to use their tracking services to try to track this mission and all of its progress using their telescopes. Now, obviously, NASA has a lot more telescopes and a lot more uh, opportunities to observe their missions. But for China, this is a huge step forward. So I guess the only thing we can do now is just wait for the mission to start in July of 2020 and then for the rover to land in February of 2021. Although well, personally, I'm actually a lot more excited about the missions from the UAE, from the United Arab Emirates, because their mission is a little bit more ambitious, but we'll talk more about this in one of the future videos. But anyway, until July 2020, there's unfortunately very little I can add about this mission, and we're not going to know anything because China just doesn't want to tell anyone anything about this. So we'll just have to wait and see. But once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, so do subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And in the comments below, do let me know, so who do you think is going to be the third on Mars? Is it going to be United Arab Emirates? Is it going to be China? Maybe Japan? Maybe Korea? Maybe Elon Musk? Take your best guess, and let's find out who wins. Maybe there might be even a price for this. You never know.